So, Jim, before we get into your top tips, because Jim sent me through some top tips, just tell everyone a bit about yourself. How many rooms? How much income? What's your rent roll? What's your, you know, all that kind of stuff. Oh, wow. You need a counting up here, just as you're trying to uh, bounce thing off. I, I, we're almost up to 800 rooms now, <coughs> of which uh, probably something like 400 are studios, which is similar to the high-end boutique or the professional end of the market. Studio, mini flats, en suite, the little kitchenette. No, uh, Mark's properties, he doesn't put kitchenettes into his uh, rooms. I do. And then I've got rooms, which is what everyone thinks of as a uh, shared house, uh, own room, share kitchen, share bathroom. And we've got about, um, again, about 400 of those. Most of the rooms are now let to housing benefit tenants. About 60% of my tenants are housing benefit. Therefore, 40% are D, uh, DSS. Uh, sorry, uh, working. <coughs> uh, rent rolls, three and a half million. Uh, don't envy me. Uh, the idea of having 800 rooms is not something to aspire to. Care for what you aspire to because... Once you get over about 50 HMOs, you have to employ staff and you have to delegate. And that's a completely different man management. It's fun at the sort of 20 uh, range. You do it yourself. You can do it yourself if you wish to. And I will suggest that you do do it yourself. Uh, it's a people business and it's interesting. Jim, how many people can you squeeze legally into an HMO? as many as you want. The spare floor space for a room is 70 square feet. Depends on the local authority you're dealing with. Leeds want 100 square feet, uh, but for a shared house, it's 70 square feet. So the way I go about looking at a property is um, kind of how many rooms can I get out of it. A room needs a window that's opening. So I go through the property, depending on how much I want to spend on it, and work out how many rooms I can get out of it. Then what's left over becomes the kitchen and bathroom. It's very easy to sort out. So you look at the rooms, and some of these Victorian properties are fantastic. Uh, when you're letting to uh, housing benefit tenants, they don't really mind too much having a 70-square-foot room. And if you've got a large double room, that's about 140 square feet, you can have two, two out of that space. So you can easily split. And the same with lounges, you take the space. So what's, you, your, what's your favorite um, kind of model, then? How many six. rooms... Six to a terraced house. Two-bedroom, terraced house. Usually, get the right house, you can fit up into six rooms. But maybe three-bedroom. But six is, tends to be about the average. If you get more, it's better. Uh, because it costs the same to run a four-room HMO as it does an eight-room HMO. So the more rooms, the more profit you can make out of it. And what are you buying, a, roughly, what are you buying a two-bed for in your area? 60 to 80,000. Okay. And what yearly income are you getting when you get six to eight beds in it? Uh, probably around about 22,000. Yeah, gross and then net? Net, ooh, um, you're throwing me in there, aren't you? Are you taking after mortgage? You're probably coming down to somewhere in the region of, after utilities are 3,600. Uh, so you've got 22,000, know, that leaves you about 18, then take, say, 1,000 off for maintenance, and then you've got the mortgage, and the rest is. So uh, do you think mortgage. it's possible to make 500 pound a house net? I wouldn't bother doing it unless you make a minimum. My safe target is about £1,000 a month. 500 is not particularly uh, uh, good. Mm -hmm. £1,000 a month is what I In the pocket. £1,000 in your pocket, yes. Yeah. Okay. okay, so hopefully you're writing all this down and following. Now, I realise it's a lot, quickly, and I don't want to think I'm interrupting Jim, but Jim will just kind of lay it all out there, and my job is to just make sure that the, you know, we're getting clear understanding. So write this down. Minimum £500 net after all costs per house. £1,000 ideally. London, add a lot more to those figures. Remember, Jim's doing it in the Midlands. So you've got to, buy, you've got to add more to your buy price, but add more to your net income as well. Cool. Now, are there instances where you don't even buy the property, Jim? Yes, that's something that's happened uh, fairly recently. <coughs> Rent to rent is, I think, the expression. Who's heard of rent to rent? Okay. Sorry, Jim. That's it, rent to rent. Although I prefer it with um, balls on in as much as I want the rent to rent with the right to buy. I, I tend to prefer that. I like the idea of being an acquiring property. Though I'm getting used to the idea of renting. After all, what's the point of owning a property? Because it just makes you rich in the graveyard. Rent is now is the income you're getting today. 
and that's really what matters. And in my area, there's plenty of people uh, who want to get out, particularly tired landlords. They find it a bit grating. They don't, like me, enjoy the business. They get fed up with tenants trashing the place, setting off the fire extinguishers, kicking open doors and all the rest of it. They get upset about it. I just put it down to that's what tenants are like. Accept them. That's the way they behave. They're going to pinch your microwave. You see little Johnny putting your telly in the back of the car. You know he's leaving you. That's his way of saying goodbye to you. Um, and you get used to that. So you don't spend much on the telly. If you shop around, you can pick up tellies for two or four quid. So it's not a big two loss. Two to four quid. Two to four quid, yeah. Old really? tellies, yeah. Well, you get, the, old, the old tellies uh, uh, you can pick up. Two uh -huh. to four. No one wants them. The big ones. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and you can't nick them. I like it. The big ones. OK, cool. So Jim's top, tip, top tips. Now, this, we're going to go quite advanced here. So if it's a little bit of your head, no problem. We can help you further. But Jim's top tips are, number one, Use commercial finance to recycle all your cash. So, Jim, in, in a few sentences, just explain the model of that, if you could. Absolutely right. I was a college lecturer before then. I didn't have any money. You're not exactly rich college lecturers. Not too badly off. So, it's all borrowed money. And the beauty of an HMO is it's valued on the income. So, go back to that property. Let's keep the math simple. Say you're getting 25 grand out of the property. Then it will be valued generally between 7 and 10 times the income. So if it's producing 25,000, it's worth between 175,000 and a quarter of a million. So within 30 seconds, I've told you all how to become valuers uh, of properties. The simple is called a yield basis, and it's valued between 7 and 10. It's down to the valuer to decide how much multiple, multiply that they will use. Better areas, you'll get 10 times. So Jim, let me just like, clarify this. So are you saying you can buy stuff at 60, 65, 80, 85 and then get them valued at 7 to 10 times 25 grand so you can double or more the value? Absolutely right. I said it doesn't make any logical sense. And could you sell it for that price? No. But in my area, reasonable area, uh, eight times income. So that property generating 25 will be worth 200K, cost 60. House next door is going for 60. And yet I've got a valuation of 200K on it. I can borrow 70%. Okay, so this is important. Jim and I are going to spend a couple of minutes on this. One of our recent HMOs that we bought in the last year, we bought for 105K, we spent 65K, and we got it revalued at 260K. Is that commercial? Yeah, with a commercial valuation. Because a residential or buy-to-let valuation will value it on what's known as vacant possession, which is comparing other vacant properties in the local area. That's, how, that's the terminology they use and how they do it. So if a property is worth 100 grand, all the others are roughly 100 grand. But a commercial lender, commercial being the word, you know, finance, money, commercial reality, if it's kicking out income, they'll lend on an income multiplier because they're valuing it on the income, a bit like a business. You know, business can be valued on income, even though it doesn't have a lot of assets, for example. And this is the magic, because you get to do no money left in HMOs, and you get to get all your refurb costs, even if they're 50 and 60 grand on a 100 grand property, back. Now, when Mark first learned this a few years ago, he was nervous and worried about it. He's a sceptical one. He's the one that likes to reduce all the risk. And he felt like... He was overvaluing on vacant possession. But that's only because his mind was set on valuing on vacant possession. But commercial lenders don't do it that way. Now, not all commercial lenders will give you a commercial valuation. Some of them will give a vacant possession valuation. Your job is to find those commercial lenders in your area. But this, by the way, when you use this little tip, enables you to get the best of everything. Because the thing that held us back for years on HMOs was big input costs, huge regulation, big deposits, all that kind of stuff. But when you can hike the value up, then it solves the problem. But it's not overvaluing it. It's valuing it on the income. 